Hello there. Well, we're at the day's theme of celebrate this time, celebrate. And I'm sitting here in a lovely room in a lovely house that belongs to Meg Milne. And Meg is part of our church family who is artistic. And that's an understatement. Some of her artwork is just so lovely. And we've been sharing and looking at some of the art and some of the stories. And uh, the one that caught me, first of all, was the one that's behind us here, where Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many homes. And I know there's a big, big story behind that. And in a moment, Meg's going to share that with us. But she's going to read a verse from John chapter 11 that means a lot to her. And then we're going to hear why. Uh, this is the verse. It's uh, verse 4, chapter 11 in John's Gospel. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, we're talking about... Uh, the sickness that Lazarus had. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, the purpose of his illness is not death, but for the glory of God. I, the Son of God, will receive glory from this situation. Mm. Right. So this is, uh, I'll just read it as I have um, can tell it to you. This miraculous story happened on the 15th of July 2001 on our 40th wedding anniversary. My husband, Alistair, was unexpectedly diagnosed <coughs> with stomach cancer in January 2000. And as one of the 10% of patients, he was given an operation. I had been praying for him for many, many years that he might know God. He was a country vet, dealing with life and death <clears throat> regularly, and was a fair and good man, with all the questions that even we as Christians ask. Why do innocent children die? Wars, famine, many of the things that are very hard sometimes to, to watch or even think about. Um... When the shock diagnosis came, I asked my husband particularly for his permission to pray. Pray for him and over and above, hoping, over and above, hoping that I would have, would be able, for what lay ahead, to fulfil anything that was practical that I could do for the man I love dearly. He seemed to do well after the op. But as the time went by, the cancer spread and he was becoming more and more ill and in great pain. During this time, I prayed continually, believing without doubt that God would come into Alistair's life. And I had hoped that he might be healed physically as well. But if I'm honest, I felt in my heart of hearts that that might not be so. As he became more ill, I still did not lose faith. I am sure God gave me the strength to pray on. As our 40th wedding anniversary drew nearer, he was very ill and bedridden. On that weekend, our, our family uh, traveled to be with us, along with our very closest friends. They all went in to see Alistair, who was in bed, by this time, and they all came out knowing they would not see him again. On the morning of our anniversary, Alistair called me through and said to me with utter sincerity and, and su some surprise, today God has touched my shoulder. Oh, what joy. God gave us the most special gift on such a special day that anyone could ever receive. He died exactly one week later. My heart was full of thankfulness and joy and deep sadness, all at the same time. But I know I will see him again and look forward <clears throat> in the fullness of time to celebrating that day. 
I'm sorry, it was a bless you. No, good. Yeah. Oh. You've been you, yeah. and that, that's it's what's good. real, you know, and it's lovely. And so that's the reason why we took the word celebrate. It might seem strange, having heard Meg's story there, but for over 30 years, Meg had prayed for her husband. What an anniversary gift God gave her and gave her husband, Alistair. So the second piece of art, just we wanted to point out to you, is this work here, because it mentions the word celebrate. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and was returned to life. He was lost and is found. May I just explain? Yes, I was going to say yes. that. The, the, the fact that there are three hands there. I mean, I couldn't imagine drawing the whole of the prodigal son. So I tried to find a simpler way to do it. And this is how it came out. And we have actually three hands here. One, I believe, is the earthly father greeting his son back and the other one is our heavenly father holding the hand of both the parables mean a lot and uh, sometimes they're tricky to paint but this was how it came out for me so i hope that there will be someone encouraged to never give up god always answers and amazingly he answers in his own very very special time Mm. God bless. Bless you. Thank you, Meg, for sharing. You've been real. Thank you for the story. It's real. That's why we took the word celebrate. Uh, we're told in heaven that the angels rejoice. <laughs> they have a party when someone comes to know the Lord God for themselves. Meg and others truly believe that that's what happened to her husband. And it can happen for you. The word celebrate, even in a time of sadness and sorrow. I'm just going to say a prayer we invite you to share with us. So, Father God, for your amazing gifts, we thank you. For your gift of salvation to Meg's husband, Alistair, on their anniversary, we thank you. Thank you, Father, that he indeed is rejoicing with you. Thank you for the hope that you have now given to Meg. Thank you for the great celebration that will happen one day in heaven. And we do pray indeed that someone would find even today a reason to celebrate with you because of your gift of salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.